Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have Scott Adams here. He's part of our podcast community and he owns his own business consultant agency. He is an amazing wizard when it comes to business. And he also has his own podcast on our show. So check it out. Make sure you listen to his podcast because he has great advice. Today, he wanted to talk about setting the stage for business success. And he's going to let you know what he means by that. And he's going to go into some different key points on how to really build a strong foundation and really build a successful business. So Scott, I'm so glad you're on the show today. Thank you so much for being here. And tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and, and help us you know, get that groundwork of how to be a successful business person. Yeah, my pleasure, Stacey. Thank you for having me on the show. It's always a fun and uh, interesting conversation we have. So Love being a part of it. Thank you for having me here today. Um, and thank you for the intro. Uh, again, I think I said last time I should just bring you around whenever I need an introduction and let you do it. Um, uh, so I'm Scott Adams, uh, kind of started Adams Consulting Firm uh, last year. So I do business consulting. My expertise is in scaling and growing companies um, from a perspective, aligning strategy and process improvement and understanding how all those interact together. So everything from integrating and make sure your financial statements and your P&Ls match up to even the people in your business and how can you scale your business and your people within it and do it in a sustainable manner that, you know, a lot of business owners, it's 120 hours a week it is today. So they don't even think about scaling their business. But um, unlike kind of the old adage, you can actually have your cake and eat it too. So you can scale your business and you can make it sustainable for life and family. And um, this is part of kind of what I do in my in my business. And that's the, set the stage for today. So, uh, you know, I wanted to talk through the initial setting of the stages for a business and making sure you have those in order to make sure that you can do it the right way uh, and not kind of fall into a lot of the pitfalls that uh, organizations and owners do over time. You know, I, I think it's so important because I think a lot of businesses struggle and I think a lot of businesses, um, you know, struggle with building a strong foundation. Um, one thing I noticed, too, is that a lot of times business owners will be in the business for a long period of time and they'll get stuck in their old ways. And then they start to see a plateau in their business and they see a lack of growth and they start to struggle and they get frustrated, but they're doing things like they had been the last 10, 20, 30 years and time is moving. Things are changing. Marketing's changing. People are scaling differently than they scaled 30 years ago. Everything, everything they do today, yeah. different uh, way of, of doing things. You know, what have you noticed um, in, you know, from your own experience when it comes to working with business people and some of the biggest, um, you know, falls that they have, like maybe possibly, you know, sticking to their old ways? Yeah, no, that's something I see a lot. Um, and again, it's sometimes it's done out of necessity. And sometimes, again, you're just too busy to look at something new or different, right? So I hear that all the time. Um, business owners, you know, I ask, why why do you do that process in that manner? And we all, we've always done that it that way. You know, it doesn't seem broken. So if it's not broke, why, why change it, right? Um, and, you know, sometimes I'd like to say, if that was the case, you know, later on tonight, I, I wouldn't be turning on Netflix. I'd be going to Blockbuster and putting a video in, right? So um, <laughs> to what you just said, things change over time. So you need to relook at what you're doing as a business and how you're doing it. And again, that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong today, but it just could mean that there is a better way. That's something a little bit more efficient um, in what you do. And, you know, when you're setting that foundation, it starts with process, but also kind of the vision and mission that you go through, you know, like you just said, those are the centering components of what what and how you should be doing it, right? So the core elements when you're starting that foundation to get off that those old adages, right, is you need to have that clear vision uh, and mission and values, right? And here's the other thing, a lot of companies have those things, but they don't actually do them, right? So that is something that you have to be aware of too. And again, it, the vision and mission doesn't always have to be to save the world, right? right? It could just be to provide a better product for your client or whoever it is out there, or there's something you're passionate about. Um, again, 
not the not the best, but you can build a better mousetrap, right? And that might just be what your vision and mission is to do that, to help people in those ways. Um, and values as well, right? If your values, and again, you could set them however you want, right? What's most important to you? And you got to remember that businesses are people operations, not process operations. So those values need to be hold true with others in your business. And yeah. it's important not to center them on what you think or what your ideal state is. It's important to center them on your true internal values, right? If integrity is important, then integrity needs to be a value, right? And work through it that way so that you have that setting when you do your hiring or you're thinking of changing something, you can always reflect back to those values and say, hey, does it check the box, right? Can, right. can that person I'm hiring, do they do these three values that's consistent with what I like to do? So right. that that way there's not a disconnect from the start, which is you know absolutely something you don't wanna have, particularly in a small business when you don't have resources to hire and bring in new people all the time. Right. Exactly. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of business owners I see also is that they don't have the resources to bring in new employees all the time. So they have to work with what they got. And sometimes, you know, um, some of the employees may not have their whole heart into it because it's not their business. Yeah. So it's like you have to really, you know, make them, you know, see, make them feel like they're a part of it, that they, you know, that it's, you know, they're, that they mean something to this business and they add value to this business. And, you know, from your own perspective, when you're trying to build a strong business foundation, how do you, you know, what are some of the ways that you can get everybody on the same page? So everybody is working a hundred percent plus and not, you know, just there for the paycheck. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that. And again, that's a great segue, right? Company culture is paramount right? But there's some things that we have to realize, right? One, our work people are not our family, right? Our family is our family. Our work people are work people. And we need to differentiate that, okay? I understand that you can build great relationships in the workplace, and that's fantastic. But I think the overall, we need to start thinking of these people as family. Now, do I think you should treat your employees like family? Absolutely, right? These are people with lives. They haven't invested the time that you have or the blood, sweat, and tears into the business, right? So you shouldn't expect the same in return, nor are they really probably benefiting from when you do things better, right? right. When your profits are better, they're not affected by it. You're not paying them more when that happens. Sometimes you are, but there, th you have to first set that expectation from a business owner perspective that these are people with lives outside of work and work isn't their life, right? Nor should it be yours, right? Your family, your hobbies, the other things you enjoy, that should be your life. So yeah. I think the first off is just that understanding, right? You're hiring people to work for you to bring your vision to life. It right. may not be their vision. And I, I think that's the start. But then, you know, when we talk about how do you get the most of, out of that person, uh, First and foremost, as always, I say, treat people like people. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, stuff happens, right? Their kids get sick. Their car breaks down. Uh, they've been waiting for a doctor's appointment for months, and suddenly one opened up on Wednesday, right? right. You need to be able to afford them those opportunities to take care of those things. And when you show your team that you're invested in them in those ways, they'll give it back to you in so many other ways. So that that's important for every business I work with and roles that I've been in the past. And again, that triggers, that goes back to that original set of values that you have, right? If you're hiring your people off of those values, then you're starting from a great place. You know, the rest of it, if it's a culture fit, if they meet your values and are interested in what you're doing, you could train everything else. I'm, yes. I'm always fully, fully in belief that you can train anybody to do anything these days. Um, right. So that, in my mind, that's how you start and that's how you get people aligned with what you do and get them invested in a different way. Um, right. But then they will bring more back to you. It's I had a conversation last week with two different people, one in HR, one that's been a manager for a long time. Right. And they asked the question because they had similar experiences. You know, what has your experience been with turnover rate? Um, you know, all over, you know, over these years and the way the workforce is today. And Honestly, in roles where I've been the leader and it had a team, my turnover rate was lower or minimal, right? Because 
I'm treating people like people and they understand that and they kind of, they respect that, right? If you give them the respect, they'll show it back to you. And uh, that's just a great way to get the most out of everybody and really have that foundation from a people perspective. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And you also mentioned that identifying the market needs and the positioning needs of, of people, that, that's another important key point of having a successful business. Like, what do you mean um, when you say identifying the marketing needs and the positioning? A lot of times, like when I, I see businesses, I'll, I'll see like two sides. You know, you see some businesses, they're doing really good. They found their marketing niche. They know what works and they're investing money in what works. And then you do see other businesses that are, you know, kind of throwing their money in all different areas of marketing. And, you know, it's it, it more so, I think the money is going out the window. A lot of it's being wasted because they're not getting the return, you know, and then you hear other people say, well, you know what, you could do it organically, like, you know, maybe not 100% organically, but a lot of it could be, can be organic, and you don't have to spend nearly as much if you know your audience and you know where your audience is at. And what's your, you know, intake on that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, budget's always a factor, right? But regardless of budget, there's always three things that I look for, um, for companies to do and three things that we would work through. One would be customer centricity, right? Much like the people that you hire in your organization, you also have to understand your customer, right? What are their needs or desires? What pain points do they have, right? It's not necessarily demographics itself, but what's the behavior pattern in how right. things go, right? Um, in a role I had at Mayo Clinic before, it was interesting when you talk about customer centricity, their typical customer path is someone who's been through the medical system for a long time, they've seen a lot of physicians, and whatever condition they have has been a years long journey, right? Two years, five years, 10 years. So their path to get into the Mayo Clinic is very unique, right? So you, you're not gonna focus on really a, acute, high, like awareness marketing needs with that, right? You gotta get somewhere in that journey where they have. But when I launched sports medicine there, completely different customer journey, right? You know, if you're a parent and you have a son or a daughter and they get injured, you need to know right away where you're going to need to go and you need to get an appointment right away. So mm -hmm. the customer journey is completely different, sometimes even within a business. And I think right. when you're looking at the small businesses, you have to understand what those dynamics are, because like you said, Stacey, there's so many different ways to market. And sure, you can kind of throw darts at a dartboard and hope you hit something, or you can get something focused a little bit more on a certain area, depending on some of these things, right? right. Once you kind of work through maybe what your customer's pain points are and their really ultimate needs and desires and understand how they get to that decision, you should look at the competitive landscape, right? Who else is doing what you're doing and targeting the customers that you are? Again, yeah. even if this comes more powerfully locally when there's going to be gaps in the market locally, right? If someone is, is doing service A, but they're targeting a specific community and you're targeting a different community, well, there's enough for both of you to eat that pie, right? And I, that's the same in business and as small business owners and even medium-sized business owners, that's the key to really finding your market. I know the thought and the research more and more is going in on a very specific niche and even the customers that aren't in your niche, they'll still get attracted to what you're doing, right? I know it's a scary thought, right? If I can market to a million people, it's better than 10,000 people, um, but you'll get a better response rate with that 10,000 group. The other, the third part of that, that I really think a lot of business owners miss is that brand storytelling component, right? Yeah. You need to make that compelling narrative that targets that audience that we just discovered, right? How right. can we build an emotional connection with them? How can we foster some level of loyalty in what they do? And you see this a lot in startups, um, small businesses too, but a lot in startups because a lot of times, you know, as a founder of a small a small business or startup, you're doing everything, right? Yeah. And a lot of times the way you get started is you have this idea that you're super passionate about right? I love making these medical cogs because, you know, I love engineering and there's something very specific about them that helps people. But 
it's very hard sometimes for those technical minds to tell the story. Yes. And, you know, we have some people that we work with that are in kind of the energy sector and they're very, they're genius. They are legit genius. And half the time I have no idea what they're talking about. Right. Because <laughs> they get so technical and so in the weeds, but that's what they're great at. Um, yeah. But if I'm pitching that idea to you or an investor or to a customer, right, right. they're going to get lost like I do. So to actually have them invest in you or sell something, you're going to miss out. So you need to understand how to tell the story. You know, that's sometimes where other people can come along and help you. But that is extremely important. If you're talking about the technical side of things, you're going to lose people. That's kind of how um, the book starts with why and kind of the Microsoft box versus Apple box, right? If you looked years ago at the Microsoft products, they had all kinds of technical specs. There was probably 10,000 words on every box of like, you know, what graphics card was in there, right? And all the different things it did. And the Apple box was relatively blank. I mean, they still are today, right? There's not much writing on Apple products because... They don't care about the technical specs because you probably don't, but they build an emotional connection to the product. And that's something small business owners can do. And that's something that they actually have a little bit of an advantage of because a lot of people do want to support those smaller businesses because there is a story, but you yeah, just have to yeah. be able to tell it. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. I think storytelling is a very important factor. I think if you can connect verbally with somebody and you can speak on their level and, you know, all you need is one fragment of a phrase in the whole story that you tell, and it doesn't have to be a long story. You could just, you know, say like maybe a paragraph, a few seconds of something. And if they could take one or two or three words and they, it, it, it resonates with them, you, you've gotten yourself a sale. You've gotten yourself ahead of the game. You break, you gain trust in, into that business, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to, you know, uh, show off your smarts. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of businesses where, you know, even you'll see it in a doctor's office, they'll talk to you in medical terminology. Well, the patient has no clue what you're saying. No. You know, instead of saying you have a cold, they go into like all the technical terms of what a cold is and, you know, and, and, the, and you have, you know, and just, to, you know, I went to a doctor's office and they're like, well, you're C3 and this and this and this and this. And like, and I just looked over at the other doctor and he said, you know, he's like, your back is out of whack, you know, and, and <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, you know, and it's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's all how you demonstrate, you know, and, and they say now the days too, you know, um, the United States reads at a sixth grade level it used to be eighth grade. Now it's sixth grade. So with that Crazy. respect have to think about how simplistic you have to make things for consumers you know it, it you know it all depends on the audience you don't know who you're speaking to but if you're speaking to the generalized population you want to make it very you know especially with the retention rate today brief, brief blunt to the point simplistic and maybe throw in a few things that they could relate to about the company or about the person who's speaking and and that's it very simple yeah, it's a lot different than the 30 second commercial days, right? You're you're exactly right. You got to be simple and you got to be fast because that attention span isn't there. And it's scary that the reading level has digressed to a sixth grade level. It's really it's really a shame. But um, maybe we'll get that back up, hopefully, with hope with so. different changes. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, you know, I I still see businesses, you know, make things very complex. Like I'll I'll see businesses where they put a lot of words into everything, and they, you know, instead of just like you know, they have the whole explanation of 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 the product, you know, in you know, and they don't yeah. have to do that. You know, I think sometimes I think my, personally, and I, I'm pretty confident about this. When you see too many words all at once, you're, you're gonna click off. Whether you're gonna you're gonna look the other way, or you're gonna if you're on your computer, you're gonna just click to a, to a different area because too many words I think overwhelm people. Too many, too, just too right. much at once overwhelms. I think most population. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's that's another great point because if you think about it too, when you're a small business owner or you have limited funds in marketing, even if you're a medium-sized business, right? That attention is important. So yeah. you don't want to spend all of those words on somebody that has no intention of buying your product, right? The, the goal with the story is just to have someone a little bit more interested 
so that right, they right. make the next click or ask the next question or want to meet with you. Um, and that's all you're looking to achieve. You know, it would be fantastic if all of us can go out and make a complete sale in 15 seconds, right? Yeah. With just an advertisement or just one statement, but that's not the case. You know, you got to build a relationship and that's the first place to start with, with your clients or your customers. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now you also talk about scalability and how to scale a business properly. And, you know, a lot of times what I see is I see a lot of businesses under scaling themselves where they are not charging what they're worth and they're not charging either, whether it's a product or a service, they are under scaling, you know, the time it takes, the, the amount of energy that goes into it, you know, maybe the costs of, that go into it. And they are not making money or they're just barely making it. They're just, if they put in X amount of dollars, they're getting a few cents back. And, you know, and then they're struggling to make ends meet because at the end of the month, they have all these other bills and they might have a payroll and so forth. And, and they're yeah. wondering, you know, how come I'm not surviving, you know? How do you scale a business properly, and how do the, does a person realize what their worth is? Because I don't, uh, you know, the, you, until you get to a certain point where you're really good at it, and you finally, you know, really tapped into, the, you know, how to scale properly. A lot of people are like, "Well, how do I know how much I'm worth? How do I know, you know, how how do I know I'm not overpricing? How do I know I'm not underpricing? You know, like, you know, how can I make a, you know, how could I grow quicker, you know, and you know, and less work and you know, and 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 more income? You know, these are questions people ask, and they just they they get very confused on what the right answer is. Yeah, one of, one of the parts I focus on is kind of that financial planning aspect, and you're right, pricing is something that's very hard to do. Um, but that goes back into kind of some of the earlier points of just making sure that you, what's the competitive landscape around you, right? What are right. others charging for similar services, right? I've worked with, I worked with a company before that I just, I couldn't believe how much they were undercharging. They had such a fear of losing business that they undercharged everything to the point where they were actually losing money on every single order they took. And that's right. so heartbreaking to think of a business owner that had sunk so much time and effort and money into something they've done, but they're they're too scared to charge what they're worth, right? So right. You, you have to look at that competitive landscape and see where your pricing is. But you're right, like you're running a business, you have to make money off of things. So um, how much is dictated by that market? But then you also have to understand what value do you bring in excess of your products, right? If you have a hands-on service, you need to charge a premium for that hands-on service, right? Mm -hmm. If you have exceptional customer service that, hey, you'll pick up the phone anytime for a customer, you need to charge a premium for that because others aren't doing that. So you need to value yourself and your business and you need to have that confidence. And I know it's hard. Right. I know it's really hard to think, hey, I can't increase my prices 10 percent or 15 percent because I'm right. going to lose business. But you have to look at your your every, every order. Are you making money? How much money are you making? And balance that back into kind of your your, you know, your profits. Uh, you know, can you pay the bills? Can you pay your people? Can I pay right. my people more? Right. Those are all things you got to consider. And it's it's a tricky balance to do. And that's why sometimes you got to bring in somebody else who is not emotionally attached to the business that can look at things from um, a data perspective, right? Company A, B, and C in the area are charging these. You're under, you provide more value. We can increase our prices past there. Um, yeah. Another thing that I'd say, when you're increasing your prices to loyal customers that have been with you for a while, no one likes doing that, right? We all know the landscape of inflation today and, and shrinkflation and all those different terms that are being thrown out there, but um, no, one, no one likes to do that, right? The business owners don't, the customers don't, but it's a necessity, right? The cost of things go up, but communicate it and be transparent, right? Yeah. Don't try to hide it or pretend it didn't happen. Be, just let your customers know straight up, right? I have to charge more because it's costing me more to make this product. You know, it's costing me more to employ people. And I want to make sure I can still give you the same quality product and the same exceptional service that you've grown to love, which is why you value our business and 
why you come back to us with return orders. So that's extremely important. And again, you are running a business, so you do need to make money. Um, you know, the, it's tough when you see things in the media all the time because you see a lot of these tech companies. I mean, even a company like Uber and Lyft, right? They've been in the red forever. I think one of them finally got in the black for a month for the first time ever. But, you know, as a business owner, like we don't have the ability to run in the red for years at a time because we're building a client base because, you know what, 10 years from now, we can sell off our land or we can monetize our list of customers and sell that to somebody. You know, yeah. we can't do that. So you need to have those honest conversations but really before you start the business, but it still needs to continually happen. You need to keep looking at that. Um, that's a huge point. And, and again, cash flow is a big deal too, right? Even though you're selling products, if you're not getting paid in 30 days or 60 days, that could be a problem as well. And I know a lot of companies, again, they don't want, they don't want to change their terms, right? I've had this client for 10 years. It's always been 30 days. They are always been 60 days. That's how they work. And I get it. There's some that have to go through a procurement process, and that's what they have to do on their end. But when's the last time, Stacey, that even you, did you pay for something later, right? If I buy something off Amazon, even if I buy a car these days, sometimes it's different. But anything purchased these days, for the most part, you're paying right away. So yes. you're not going against the grain if suddenly you're changing your policies to ask your customers, hey, I need to pay right away because you know what? in order to make this for you, I got to purchase the goods yes. that then become what I give to you in the end. So uh, that's an acceptable practice that kind of falls apart. Um, another thing, when you're talking about growing your business, there's two more things that I like to cover in this section with clients. The one being a strategic partnerships, right? What other businesses or business owners can you partner with that maybe have something complementary? Right. right. Is, there, is there something that you do that's a little different than someone else, but maybe you don't have access to their market or their customers that they can help you bring in? Right. You mm -hmm. see that a lot. Tech companies create partnerships. Medical companies create partnerships. Fast food yeah. companies create partnerships. So think about those things in your area and what other small business owners can can do that for you. And, you know, your small business associations will gladly put, you know, you in touch with others that can help complement what you do. So that's something that I think gets overlooked at times. And I know when we talked about marketing um, early on, that's something that usually costs nothing, right? right. I'm going to make an introduction. I'm going to meet you, Stacy. Let's talk about what we do. You know, yeah. do you have customers that need what I have? And can I, do I have customers that need what you have? So right. those are important to create those relationships. Again, this is kind of a theme we're going here, right? Relationships yes. with your staff, relationships with your customers, relationship with other business owners. Um, yes. So there's those components. And the last from like getting ready to build that foundation is operational efficiency. And I can nerd about this for hours at a time, um, mm -hmm. but I know no one else wants to hear about it, right? It's not fun. It's really boring. Um, but what you got to think of when you're, a small business, any business, I've seen this in large corporations, right? You have a way of doing things, then something comes up. Something breaks, something changes, software changes, someone's out, you know, a fire happens. And yes. I always say in all the jobs and consulting roles I've had, um, sometimes you're a fire person, right? You're just constantly putting out fires. But what happens in those businesses, getting back to the business owner at the start today, when been doing the same thing for 15 years they've something's changed they do a workaround and then something mm -hmm. else changed and they do a workaround and then something breaks so they kind of don't fix it all the way and they kind of do another workaround right yeah. so then you have these series of workarounds that build up and if you think about the i and again to try to make this not nerdy if you think about a jenga tower right? You start out with the Jenga tower. It's perfect, right? You've taken yeah. no pieces out of it. It's perfectly strong. It stands. But think of your business over time. When things happen, you're removing one of those blocks. Yeah. And next thing you know, and again, a lot of times you don't, business owners don't realize it is that that tower is ready to fall, right? That right. Jenga tower, if you move one more thing, no matter how skilled you are, it's going to crumble. And people forget that and things fall apart and things get more inefficient and you're like why i don't understand what happened it was working so well then it fell apart so you need to 
constantly go over what you're doing. And that's where, when I talk about the start with a vision and a strategy of what you're doing, um, startups are probably the prime example of this, but every business was a startup at some point, right? So they keep doing yeah. this is you constantly work to fix things over time. And then even something as simple is going to take extra steps. And the problem is, is all that is lost time and lost money, right? Recovering those is all profit because you're not putting more money in to fix these problems. Sometimes you got to put a little bit, but what you're doing is making things more efficient. You're getting more out of your people. And now all of a sudden those orders don't cost as much to complete, right? So you're, you're making more money. Um, and that's why I say like in the consultant world to a business owner, and I get it, sometimes it's tough to like fork over money to hire a consultant or bring somebody in. But um, I was talking to a financial expert the other day, again, because he was trying to, you know, share with me what he does and how he brings in customers. And I said to him, I said, if I, if, if you as a business owner, if I said, hey, if you can give me X, I'll return your investment five to 10 times within two years. Mm -hmm. I think Stacy, all of us, me included, would scrounge up every penny I have in the couch cushion and gladly yeah. give it to them, right? There's no there's no stock, bank account, anything that can get you five to ten times in two years. But coming in as a consultant, right? If you're a million dollar business and I can come in and improve 20% your operations, right? right, right. That's two hundred thousand dollars right there. Now, right. I would love to get paid $200,000 to come in and make those changes, which you would still break even and make money every subsequent year. But that's not the fact. So when you look at a small business owner, even as a small business owner where the margins are smaller and the amount of revenue is smaller, 10 or 20 percent is sometimes the difference between being in the red and losing the business and being in the black and making money. Right. right. So these things, no matter how boring they are, are some of the biggest investments that you can make in a company. And that's why these are key. All these components are key because again, it's going to help with your revenue and going to help with your profits. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I, I think if you take all those key components that you mentioned, you, you can really build a very strong foundation of a business. You could actually, and, and you could actually really, in, you know, your income can grow very quickly by having all those key components intact, you know, because yeah. just one of them out of tack could actually slow things down or hurt your business, you know, tremendously. I don't think people realize that, but the importance of a strong business foundation, identifying the marketing needs, I marketing is so important, you know, and, and, you know, and small businesses and startups only have X amount of dollars to put into it. And if they're throwing thousands and thousands of dollars into marketing and it's not, they're not getting a return or they're getting, you know, maybe a couple of clients off of it, but they're not, if they're not making back their money, you know, they're, they have to, you know, suck up a loss and then they have other expenses, you know, so that, yeah. that, that could be really detrimental, you know, and, and like we talked about scaling a business, you know, if you, if you don't properly scale that, that could mean, you know, that could mean, you know, surviving, you know, or thriving, you know, and, or else oh, wow. you, you can go down the twos completely, you know, if, if you wait that long and you don't really under, grasp the concept of, of scaling. But I like the idea that you mentioned about really looking at your competitors, you're looking at what they're, what they're doing, because if you're really scared about losing customers, you know, look at what your, your, your local neighbors are charging, you know, and if they can charge that much and, and you know that you have the experience and the expertise to really gear people to a higher level and, or give them what they need. Plus there should be that, that scare feeling should go away pretty quick, quickly. You know, you just have to be confident in what you're worth, you know? And yeah. I think one of the things I like too, is when you said that, you know, is, is that you should collaborate with people. Sometimes we look at our competitors as, as the evil, evil bodies, you know, right. <laughs> And we could actually, you know, become by collaborating and getting to know one another, we could actually grow and, and gain that snow, snowball effect. You know, that's how many companies grow into multi million and billion dollar companies because they collaborate with other companies. Yeah, it can definitely escalate what you do. And then I think uh, one thing, too, that we didn't mention is uh, when we talk about marketing, let's say you put all that money in and you were very successful, right? You gained 
a thousand customers, a hundred thousand customers, whatever it is. Yeah. If you don't have your operations on the back end ready for that as well, then you're going to create a nightmare. You're going to create a poor experience for your customer and you're going to lose them. Uh, it's, it's funny. I will co-collaborate with some marketing agencies at times because they see that they come in and, you know, a business has had, Hey, we get customers, but we can't convert them. Um, they don't come, they never come back. And this is part of the reason why you invest a bunch of money in the marketing component, but you haven't fixed your operations to actually get whatever it is you sell or service, get it out the door to the customer in a good way. So you have to consider both in kind of going through those. Um, yeah. And you're right about pricing. It's like, if you think about gas stations, right? They're always within a few cents of each other. Right. Yeah. One goes up, the other one goes up within a couple hours. And it, you, you should be doing the same thing with your business, right? It's the gas stations don't put a giant cover on their sign. So only the customers see when they pull in what the price is. But yeah. um, it, it's out there. And again, you could do that too, depending, but you have to, you have to stay on top of all of these things. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I agree with you totally. Now, if we had to really take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners about what we talked about today? Yeah, I, I, we've said it a few times. Relationships are important, right? Yeah. So those relationships with your employees, um, the relationship with your business, right? Or do you value your business? Like what kind of values do you have in your business? Mm -hmm. uh, the value that you have with your relationship with your customers, your relationship with others in the community and other businesses, right? These are yeah. the important the important facts. Yes, you do need process behind all of these, but they're all done by people. Um, right. so that's important. I think another thing too is, again, you could plan. We always like to plan for everything going right, mm -hmm. but we also need to plan for things going wrong. So right. that's important part of the process too, because again, when something goes bad, you want to be prepared, right? It's the same thing with, you know, you're in your house. What happens if there's a fire, right? Do you have a meeting point? Do you have a fire extinguisher? How do you get out? Like those kind of things are important. It's the same with your business. Um, so you got to, you got to incorporate that management of change when something changes within the business and then risk. And that's part of the competitive landscape and those relationships too, right? you learn from everybody something different and you can yeah. learn about those risks and you can learn how to manage change if you've established those relationships with people. So to me, again, despite being someone who gets ingrained in process, I do yeah. fully yeah. know that people are the ones that make the magic happen. So if we can empower the people to do their, their jobs, run their business, still have time for family plus business, then right. we have a much better chance for success. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think, I think, it, I think those, those things you emphasize on are really important. And I think, I think people can really run good businesses if they understand the concepts of, of the stages, the things that they have to have intact. And I think that's why business consultant is so important. You know, the, the biggest thing you hear is that I don't have the money. Well, you know, you know, you have to think about it, you know, well, if you did, you know, you know, everybody has the money if they really want to, because if you think about it, you go out for, for a steak dinner with, with <laughs> your, your partner, you right then and there, you spent at least 150 plus, you know, yeah, for that's with no drinks. <laughs> that's with no drinks. Like we had the drinks up. You have a two hundred dollar plus bill, you know, yeah. and so if if you think of it in that respect, and you think about how much you spend on certain things, if you really if you really want something, you you could figure out a way to do it. Now, if you have a business consultant, and they can throw, they could analyze your business and show you where you're lacking and what what things need to be improved and what things are okay. And, you know, and, and show you step by step how to take, you know, something that looks so complicated and make it very simple. It's well worth the, the, the money because by by the end yeah. of the year, you know, if you do everything the right way, you'll see a difference. You definitely will. You know, I know for for me, I did business consultant and, and within within I think it was within a couple of months I had x my salary and then you know my business had 4x itself and mm -hmm. then within within seven months i had 10x my business so you know you have to really think about 
really looking into, you know, uh, business consultants, business coaches, accountability coaches, you know, like all it's, and it's good to have one, I think one for, you know, for different things. It's always good to, you know, the, especially if you're a startup business or a beginning business, you know, getting on the right foot is so important. You know, there's so many people who try to do it all, all by themselves, and they're not really sure how to run a business. They might have the, the creativity and the passion to do what their, their, their business stands for, but then, if you don't know how to really run a business, because it's two different worlds, the product yeah. service versus the business side, you can, you know, you know, doing well and excelling is, is virtually impossible. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I hear, I attend pitches frequently and I hear people pitch. There's so many great ideas out there. And even mm -hmm. out in the business world today, there are so many great ideas out there, but they never get anywhere. And that's heartbreaking because yeah. there's, there's medical cures out there. There's improvements for things we do every day, right? There's wellness improvements. There's all kinds of things that are in people's minds that they just can't get out. So that that is extremely important to get in. And um, again, I've worked for many different businesses. I have yet to go in a business where everything is perfect. Um, so there's always going to be something that can be improved. Okay. And um Again, we're not talking about reshaping everything. Can we do that? Yes. Can I take a business and just completely transform it from bottom up? Absolutely. But a lot of times, just little small tweaks make a huge difference. And then right. once you get that in and that cash flow in, you can invest it more in your people or in improving things um, and, and grow the business faster than you could even imagine. Um, it's you know, the same if you're in a sports, if you like golf, right? All professional golfers have a caddy, right? Yeah. They can they can do anything they want with that golf ball, right? But they still need someone to help guide them on, along the way. Right. And you should think about your businesses that way. It's just a guide to help. It's not, you know, I don't come in and take over a business, right? I come in and I work with the business owner as their caddy, right? Let's guide yeah. you through this process. Let's look at these things. Let me ask you questions that maybe you haven't thought about before and sometimes question why things are done the way they are. And, yeah. you know, it, there's always a benefit. Um, again, and even if there isn't, if you go in and everything's perfect, well, congratulations, you have peace of mind that you're doing everything absolutely right, uh, mm -hmm. which has value in itself. But I promise you, there's always something um, to make better that'll translate into a better bottom line. A hundred percent. Now, where can people get a hold of you if they want to um, talk to you and maybe, you know, work on having you as a consultant or get some business advice and so forth? Yeah, the best way is just go to my website. So adamsconsultingfirm.com. Uh, there's a link there for a free consultation. There's also contact information, uh, email, my LinkedIn page, and any information that you want on there. Uh, I always like to say, uh, part of what I do at Adams Consulting Firm is turn challenges into opportunities, uh, which is exactly what we talked through today, right? There's always something that we can use to make everything better. 100%. Well, this has been amazing, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. These are topics that I think are really worth, you know, talking about because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they know that they're, they're, there's problems in their within their business, that they... They just don't know what it is. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, the closest people to them who see the problems, they won't listen to. But then someone that comes from an outside source that has an unbiased opinion, you know, shares their information and shares their opinion, and it's more welcome. So sometimes it's easier when you when you have somebody on the outside talking to you rather than somebody that you feel close to or you work with on a constant you know basis sometimes it's just it's it's better to have that unbiased person come into the business and say well this is what i'm picking up and this is what i see and for some reason it it's taken better than it is when if someone <laughs> with the business is saying the same thing so yeah absolutely as an outsider i can kind of tell the honest truth to somebody um Whereas if, if you had to look them in the eye every morning and they were signing your paycheck, you can't really do that. But um, yeah, I and I say too, I'm one of the least threatening consultants you'll ever see um, because again, I like to work in collaboration and uh, I understand this is your business. This is your baby, your life. This is what you're passionate about. I'm only here to help. Right. 
This has been great, Scott. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time today. And thank you so much for sharing such valuable information. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure, Stacey. It's always an honor to chat with you. Same here. You have a great day. You too.